Welcome to the workshop. Today we want to take a look at rooted trees and just look at uh, a simple example that utilizes some definitions and that's about it. So for this given rooted tree, we want to identify uh, these things. Now notice that this rooted tree is presented in the usual way. Uh, that is a rooted tree is a directed graph, but here you'll notice that none of the edges have directions given. That's because it's assumed that you're traveling from the root to every other vertex. So uh, the direction would be indicated by how you would get to each vertex from the root, uh, where the root is given at the top. So that identifies for us the very first thing, the root. The root in this case, the top vertex, is A. Then we want to identify the internal vertices. Now the internal vertices are simply uh, vertices that have children or that have a vertex that comes after. So uh, we have to have the idea of children. So for example, A has children B, E, and D. So we know that A is an internal vertex because it has children. So as long as it has children, it's an internal vertex. So A is there. B, E, and D each have children. Excellent. C has a child. J does not. G does. K does. Let's see here. And that's it. That's all. Perfect. Then the next thing we want to do is identify the terminal vertices, which are just the vertices that do not have any children. So a lot of those you'll find at the bottom, but you do need to be careful. For example, uh, F wasn't written all the way down there, although as far as generations you might say, it's supposed to be down here. Uh, but J is definitely not in this same generation, and it is terminal, as is L. So J and L are both terminal vertices because they don't have children. And then all along this bottom, uh, none of these vertices have children either. So F, H, I, N, N, and O. F, H, I, N, N, and O are all terminal vertices. All right. Next, we just want to identify the parent of G. So you find a G and determine which vertex comes before it. If you're traveling from A to G, what's the predecessor to G? E. That is the parent of G. Excellent. Then we want to take a look at the children of B. So if we were to travel from A to B, we where could we go next? Well, we could go to C or we could go to J. Those are the children of B. C and J. Next, we want to determine the descendants of D. Now, the descendants, uh, well, actually, let's put it this way. Uh, if we were to consider a path from A to I, for example, then A, E, and G would all be the ancestors of I. Okay? And... I is said to be a descendant of each of those vertices. So uh, that's how we've been working with what the definition of the descendant is, focusing on one vertex and saying who it is a descendant of. Okay, I is a descendant of G, I is a descendant of E, I is a descendant of A. Uh, but we want to say, all right, let's pick out a particular vertex and look at all of its descendants. So what that means is we're just looking at the vertices which have a path from A to that vertex that includes D. So a path from A to L would include D. So D has descendant L. A path from A to K would include B. So D has descendant K uh, and so on. We can pick up N, N, and O in the same way. So that would give us K, L, N, N, and O. Okay. 
Excellent. And from there, uh, we want to determine the ancestors of H. So here is H, and we're just looking for the vertices that appear in the path from A to H, not including the vertex H itself. So A, E, G, H is not included. Excellent. So that's an example of some basic terminology working with rooted trees. I'll see you guys back in the workshop very soon.